morning namaste welcome to yet another edition of india first leadership talk today we have with us an exceptionally dynamic is officer shri rohit kumar singh currently serving as secretary department of consumer affairs he has worked extensively and provided leadership across ministries and departments he has led some commendable government initiatives and policy interventions to make our lives better let us move on and know more about him and his accomplished work from the man himself very very warm welcome shri rohit kumar sir thank, thank you. you sir you have had an amazing journey please tell us something about your journey your childhood your schooling various opportunities challenges struggle how has it been so my father was in a transferable job in up state electricity board he was an engineer and so early childhood we would go to schools wherever he was posted but then i was sent to a boarding school which is run by the j krishna murthy foundation uh, in, uh, which is located at the banks of river ganga in varanasi it's called the rajghat school so okay. from 6 to 10th i was there and then in 11th class because that school was only till 10th okay and 11th i was in queens college in varanasi and then i got selected for iit because at that time it was permitted for students to to take iit exam after 11th class right and i was at iit bhu for 5 years then i went to us for graduate school completed okay. my masters in computer engineering and a few projects for big multinationals and then came back to india uh, taught a little bit at iit bhu we actually set up the department of computer engineering there okay and then moved on to the ias so in brief this has been my journey uh, since your father was in a transferable job and you moved on for your studies from different places and then eventually to a boarding school and subsequently to iit bhu how has been your journey and what kind of qualities such as adaptability is new cultures you have learned very early in your life so i think you are very right the the best lessons of moving from place to place is how quickly you adapt to new situation and you also get a very varied experience of small city a bigger city a different country so uh, i think that has really helped me in the ias because if you see how indian administrative services one day you are in one ministry then you are shifted to another ministry then to a psu so i think that the quality to adapt quickly to the changing circumstances that has really helped me uh, and stood me in good stead and it's a very important quality even today for all the students right. with the, the kind of uh, right. scenario change scenario we are into so Uh, one very interesting question i want to ask you you did your masters from united states that clarkson university new york and 34 years back or 35 years back probably you know it was a better part of the world and you were also teaching there and i can make out that uh, you were one of the most brilliant student with the kind of uh, accolade you received there so how come you decided that uh, you will actually leave that uh, the better part of uh, your you know staying and then move on to india will get into the administrative services and get into public service domain so i think there were two factors behind it one was the family my mother has been a very strong personality and a great influence over me so she convinced me that you know uh, i could use my experience and talent better for india and for the people of india so i think she convinced me a great deal and when i joined the information technology revolution was you know just beginning and we could see the tremendous potential and i always wondered how you know, information technology can be used in india across sectors because at that time there was a big difference between technology where it was in the us and where it was in india i remember when i went from here i had also worked for a small uh, period for 3 months in tata consultancy services okay and we used computers where the input was through punching cards okay. so we had a set of there was no terminal to type right and then when i went to us i saw a different you know set of computers 
Win uh, running on Unix okay. and IBM 370. And I thought if that technology, you know, is possible to use in India, especially in public domain, how much difference will it make? So I think these two factors, one, my mother's influence and the other, you know, exploring India through this technology, you know, that was somewhere at the back of my mind. And these two factors, you know, convinced me to return back to India. You very fondly uh, spoke about your mother. And it appears that, you know, she has been one of the greatest influence in your life. So tell us a little bit more about her and would you really call her uh, as your role model in personal and professional life? Oh, totally. She is uh, the most, she's the best role model anyone could have. In fact, all mothers are role models for their children. But I think uh, my mother being from a background of a conventional you know, family with a very hierarchical society, she continued her higher education post her marriage, did her PhD when I was born wow. and then went on to become a very accomplished academician and she was a great expert in educational psychology. So we saw her, you know, through uh, in the family, we used to see her, how dexterously she would manage both the home and the profession and constantly motivating all four of us children who are now uh, I mean, we have good careers, all of four of us. And I think she is squarely responsible as being the motivating factor. And she always inspired us to work hard, uh, never to be deterred by a defeat. And she would always tell us, nee, nee, ab hoga, aur karo, hoga, hoga. And then, uh, you know, the, the value of small savings, which I think most teachers and professors in India you know, have this feeling. So I think, you know, many of the qualities that uh, one should inculcate in their children, the value of savings, the value of good education, the value of hard work, the value of not getting deterred by failure. I think all of this came from my mother and uh, not only to me, for all four of us siblings. And I think we have learned a great lot from her. In fact, in families where women are strong, and women, you know, are uh, the anchors. I think that is where the children do the best, is my personal feeling. Such a commendable contribution by your mother. And we definitely require stronger women for a more inclusive society to make a much better community and of course, you know, nation. Right. Now, let's talk a little bit about your current job profile. This ministry's, your ministry's multimedia awareness campaign, Jago Grahak Jago, is a very unique initiative in its own space. So, to what extent do you think it has been able to meet its objectives, make uh, all the consumers aware of their rights? As far as consumer protection, the whole ecosystem is concerned, I think the fundamental pillar is awareness. And unless the consumers are aware about their rights, and unless they start asking questions about why MRP is not there, why expiry date is not there on this product, and why the ISI certification is not there because it is affecting my safety. So unless the consumers start asking this question, the producers, the suppliers will not be forced to do it. Of course, there is a legal framework, there's a law, but I think because the spread is so much, we have you know 140 crore people and lakhs and crores of businesses. So enforcement cannot work unless the client, that is the consumer is aware. So Jago Grahak Jago campaign has been there for quite some time. And uh, I think it has paid dividends and uh, people are aware and they ask questions. But, uh, you know, recently, if you have seen the flavor of trade has changed. There is increasingly use of e-commerce. People want the, you know, the comfort of their homes. People want to click a button and the supply should come to their home. So when there was a small mom and pop store, a corner shop and people would buy stuff from there and if something went wrong, they would go, they had a personal equation with the person who was selling. So it was easy for them to get a refund or a change or the guy himself would ensure quality. But with e-commerce, you know, this whole balance has shifted. The power balance between the consumer and the seller has shifted. So we need to be more careful. We need to be more aggressive in creating awareness. We need to discipline the e-commerce companies more to address the grievance redressal. 
so i think awareness is very important and it has become more important with the advent and rise of e-commerce e-commerce platforms various large hugely large aggregators right. uh, I mean, let's not really name them, but right. they have become so powerful right. that the entire power equilibrium between exactly. a consumer and right. actually a company, and right. then you are not seeing a, a product from your own eyes, you are not touching right. it. So everything is based on the information provided by the aggregator right. itself, or maybe uh, the seller uh, himself right. or herself. So how and what kind of various cautions, what kind of uh, various steps can be taken which is based on a concept of that consumers are aware of their rights they know what should be written what should not be written right. and another thing is that india is a country of multiple languages so we have a huge linguistic diversity right. so this jago grahak jago is this campaign is also in different indian languages right. is it also in regional languages uh, and then you know the penetration of radio or other say mobiles not right. necessarily smart right. mobiles other mobiles right. also is it also on all those platforms right so let's take it Into, one, yeah, by one. one by one uh, so you are right uh, as we said uh, you also said that the uh, the power equilibrium is really you know in favor of the big e-commerce players because consumer is alone and these are huge you know when they have billions of transactions every day so uh, now there are two three things one is the fairness in terms of what is being offered to the consumer has to be fair the choice options have to be fairly provided uh, to the before the consumer i'll talk about associated thing of reviews now when you and i buy a product on an online platform we see how it has been reviewed by other buyers so some says four star five star but sometimes we don't know whether that review is genuine or fake so now uh, with the help of bureau of indian standards we have developed a framework for the e-commerce platform to address the issue of fake reviews so that the buyer the consumer gets an opportunity to get an honest review system now the second is grievance redressal we have something called the national consumer helpline on which we get about 1 lakh complaints every month now we every have realized month. yes so we we analyzed the data and we realized that about 4 year back 4 years back the percentage of online buying complaints was 8% but last month it rose to 50% almost half of my 1 lakh complaints were against this e-commerce players so we keep telling the big ones and the small ones that you have to improve your grievance redressal we also take punitive action if there is a violation of the act but i think this thing will only change when the consumer is aware and he starts questioning and his buying behavior is determined by the fairness of the platform about the other question on languages so in uh, on the national consumer helpline we answer in 12 indian languages and we have only decided last week that we will add eight more languages so from next say a couple of months onwards we will be replying in 20 indian languages so you are right language is a big issue on e-commerce also right sir uh, aict that all india council for mm -hmm. technical education it has developed an ai based translation tool right so in case you want to even make use of this campaign jago grahak jago yeah. campaign then the languages can be immediately the content can be immediately sure. translated in different indian languages now so you know this is a time of social media explosion right the whole world is uh, about what is being done on facebook and twitter and instagram right. and the number of followers uh, all these people have and the greater the following those people eventually become uh, social media influencers right. so please tell us something about social media influencer trend of advertising and marketing so brands engage content creations and then social media influencers they endorse different products different services right. we do not know in the back end maybe they are paid money for it right. or they have received certain services or there is some gift for that so we are not really aware of so how do we deal with this kind of social uh, media influencer endorsement okay so uh, you are very right the uh, the advertising paradigm has changed Uh, with the uh, increase in use of social media platforms 
so in conventional media whether it is print or television or uh, similar other me radio you know you can make out that this is an advertisement but you are right when a social media influencer with 5 lakh following says this product is good you don't know whether it has been paid for it or it is his honest his or her honest opinion so only last friday uh, government has issued these guidelines uh, which is in form of a regulation for social media influencers which has very three simple points who to disclose so if you are a social media influencer and you are endorsing a product or a service you have to disclose and then how to disclose is if it's a picture then you have to say that it is paid and if it's a video it has to be uh, disclosed at the beginning and in the middle of the video it is a, if it's a live stream then it the constant ticker has to come so the idea is for disclosing this information to the consumer that whatever is being endorsed has been a uh, money has been uh, money has transacted for endorsed for that endorsement so sometimes it is not money you know it's a paid holiday or a free television or a free product so we have further modified the definition that if you have a material connection okay. with the brand that you are endorsing then okay. you have to disclose that i think the whole essence is disclosure to the consumer so that consumer knows whether it is an unbiased review or a paid review so that he can his uh, calibrate his buying behavior accordingly and sir disclosure also a little prominently because right. sometimes you will see that uh, it's actually a sponsored post and in the smallest right, possible right. font in very corner it would be written right. that it's a sponsored post so we have taken yes. care of that that's right, a very good sir. question in our guidelines and we have said the font size has to be the same and the speed at which the audio is coming cannot be if you remember on some television channels there would be mutual fund advertisements the way compressed audio so people right. cannot make out what cannot i'm saying out, yeah. so we we have said that the speed has to be the same so yes you are right we have to take care that the disclosure is very clear to clear, the consumer yes. and legible i think it's a very very important step and right. it will make uh, our right. consumers very aware of it now uh, consumers if i may say that we have to really catch them young so how can schools colleges universities contribute to consumer awareness their rights consumer protection and finally to right. grievance redressal so can we also uh, take this whole consumer awareness campaign uh, to um, a younger audience right. i mean to the audience the who are at our schools or at our colleges so right. can actually uh, do you think sir something we should catch them here right actually we should so what we have done is we are also asking for inclusion of this as a small part of the syllabus in their uh, general uh, cbse or whatever boards they follow then uh, there are some clubs which okay. we call consumer clubs uh, some are doing very well in delhi some are doing very well in other states and in addition to that we, uh, our ministry also is responsible for standards bureau of indian standards right, with right. us and they uh, are promoting standards in the schools Okay. So in the schools, there are four thousand standard clubs, okay. where BIS people go and tell them that why standards are important, so that the quality consciousness of the country improves, which is indirectly related to consumer protection. Because if you are not getting a quality product, you should okay. start demanding that. You should start listening, uh, looking for that ISI mark and other things. So we have four thousand plus standard clubs, and we have a lot of consumer clubs in various uh, educational mm -hmm. institutions. and by incorporating in syllabus and other activity i think you're right unless we catch them young this thing you know this thing has to be ingrained into our psyche right, that sir. we cannot be taken for a ride uh, just because we are a you know simple consumer and this entire thing it's and actually it's an ecosystem right. you have manufacturers you have suppliers some of them are very good and very very quality conscious right. whereas some of them are not so good and do not reveal the complete information right. so see you have a complex job to do because right. you would also like that uh, we have a concept of ease of doing right, business right. or ease of uh, performing trade uh, in national education policy 2020 right. we call right. it uh, light but tight regulations right. so how do you balance and how do uh, the, your department tries to do 
the a balancing act that consumers are also not duped and complete right. information is provided whereas at the same time suppliers manufacturers sellers these aggregators right. they also feel that there is actually an ease of doing business right. in the country because that is very very imperative right. for our economy right. so that's a very good question and that is i think the toughest job that i have like where do you strike the balance and how do you strike the balance between ease of doing business that means our laws our rules should not become an impediment in a good business but also we protect the interests of the consumer so that as i said consumer is not taken for a ride so uh, we are constantly engaged with the industry and the supply side but when we call them for discussions we also call the consumer organizations so that there is always a balance i'll give you an example the labeling on the product under legal metrology is also with our ministry and this uh, you know the phone manufacturers came and said sir the size of label is becoming too big because there are regulations from ministry of consumer affairs there are regulations from ministry of environment and forest and other regulation so sometimes the label was becoming bigger than the pack of the phone itself okay so we uh, handled this problem about 6 months back we talked to them So now we have permitted them to use a QR code. So we said instead of the three things, the price and uh, what is contained in the package, like whether there is a charger or a plug or not, and third, which is very important for Atma Nirbhar Bharat, is country of origin. Yeah. So we said these three things only you print on the label. For everything else, have a QR code so that a person who is you know is going to buying a phone obviously can scan that and can have access to that information. So this is one example of how you strike a balance between ease of doing business but at the same time not compromising the interest of the consumer. So uh, you are trying to have an enabling environment right. of mutual trust, transparency and informed choices. Right. Uh, so tell us something about this fair digital finance. We <coughs> spoke about it uh, a little while from now. But then uh, this with the ministry how is it leveraging the uh, disruptive technological advancements you know such as india stack like now we have aadhaar then you, we also have various upi uh, transactions we can even use uh, ai for uh, making this whole ecosystem a much better one so how do you feel that uh, various schemes various administrative policies the framework how can it be make much more efficient much more deliverable uh much more uh, enabling by using that story of india stack and since you come from that kind of background and from the very inception of your academic career so how would you uh, think and you know envision it that this kind of uh, technological advancements be a boon right. be an enabling factor for your ministry so i think not only for our ministry for the entire uh, e governance framework the use of latest and uh, upcoming technologies is very important for all the ministries and it's upon the leader the secretary or who's leading this initiative he has to take you know a macro view as to which parts of his work domain by infusion of technology can be made efficient for example we talked of you know bi standards we talked of uh, legal metrology where there are weights and measures which need to be certified whether this is actually 1 kg or not so there is lot of uh, credentials that are part of our system so if you and for credentials you need traceability for example when india is exporting cotton to the western world they would like to know whether this cotton is of you know what variety so the whole traceability thing is important not only for the confidence of the domestic consumer but also for export for example a lot of products are sold as organic right so it says it's an organic product but how does one know whether it's a genuine organic product or not what is the traceability how will we know whether fertilizer was used or not used whether uh, an organic you know ecosystem was there for the product so for addressing traceability we've started working on blockchain platforms okay. because blockchain is one platform where you cannot tamper with the transaction or with the uh, once it's there in that database then you can't tamper okay. so we are now putting uh, we've just started this we're now putting the entire standards framework the entire legal metrology framework 
on blockchain technology so that for the user, whether it's a consumer or industry, the traceability is established. Okay. The other thing is we are using artificial intelligence in analytics of even the complaints that we get on the National Consumer Helpline. So we are constantly analyzing as to why this particular you know uh, product is getting more complaint. Then we have about 750 companies which are directly connected to our helpline. So we seamlessly send it to them that see consumers are complaining a lot about this product. And also we have about 750 consumer courts in which as we speak there are 5 lakh 20 thousand cases pending across India. Okay. So we did a massive exercise about two months back and we analyzed as to out of these 5 lakh 20 thousand cases which are the you know most uh, occurring cases with the highest frequency and we did a little analytics and realized that one third of these 5 lakh 20 cases is like 1 lakh 70 thousand plus are only pertaining to insurance. Okay. So that means there is something wrong in the way insurance is being handled in our country. So I went to my batchmate and friend who is now in the Department of Financial Services Secretary who handles insurance. We said let's sit together and lay, take a good look at this your entire insurance framework as to why people are getting dissatisfied and coming to our consumer course. So I'm giving these examples because using these technologies you can quickly come to conclusions and start looking at solutions to these problems. So both in identification of the problem and provision of the solution, these technologies, especially the new ones can be a great help. Right, sir. And I think for having this kind of absolutely tech integrated uh, framework, we would also require an attitudinal shift. I think of course. Uh, a, an entire different psychological right. leaning right. for right. Uh, uh, getting a uh, technology completely right. embedded into the framework right. uh, because you know the other side also if I want to buy a refrigerator and I right. start looking at a refrigerator right. the moment I open any of the sites right. any of the websites I'll see too many advertisements of a refrigerator it's all right till right. this point but I'm not even aware that some of them can actually be the sponsored one or the preferred one so I think we right. would uh, need a different yeah. setup hmm. so now you were uh, uh, talking about organic, whether the fertilizer has been used or not used. So you have recently written a very, very well uh, written article that greenwashing stain. Right. So would you uh, tell us something about it? Because we are in a flat world. Whatever I do today impacts everybody. Right. Not only uh, my cohabitants, not only the community, but also our planet Earth. So I, right. I understand that you are a very climate and sustainability right. conscious person. Right. So please tell us something about it. So you're right. Uh, I think India historically and culturally has been a society where uh, you know, we have been climate conscious because we realize that our existence, jisko prakriti bolte hai, ki prakriti ke saath samanjasse se rehna padega. You know, you have to be in harmony with nature, otherwise you cannot progress. Right. And if you start ignoring prakriti okay. or how nature or the planet earth, then disasters like what is happening in Joshimurt or what happens elsewhere will keep happening. So you have to be in close harmony with nature. Now India gradually over last seven eight years uh, has emerged as a climate change the one of the biggest leaders in this framework of how to address climate change and honorable prime minister has gone to many cop summits and he has in fact in the last one he introduced this concept of mission life which is lifestyle for environment, environment right. which is mostly for us to use uh, how to have you know less consumption repair, recycle, reuse, which are always there in our culture. Right. right. And he's just re-emphasizing it. So he's asking people and companies to be conscious of how we are adversely affecting environment and do not do that. What I wrote in that article was when there are people who are well intentioned on that, some people will try and take advantage of the system. Some manufacturers, some traders will paint their products as eco-friendly whereas they are not. They will put a green label, they will put a tree on the box as a symbol without actually telling the consumers that how much actually eco-friendly that product is. So that phenomenon of lying in that dimension is called greenwashing. Right. That you are portraying something as green whereas it is not. Right. 
so i wrote that article just to caution the consumer that do not just believe in what the company is saying go into their track record do some more research like your refrigerator example before you buy something or before you trust something to be eco friendly please do some more due diligence that is a, was a cautioning article for the consumers the knowledge and information that we are getting through this conversation is truly amazing but we will have to stop here due to time constraint we'll resume and have another round of conversation with shri rohit kumar singh keep watching this space goodbye